So we have just started renovating this small loft space. And as I'm sat here waiting for our new floor in to arrive, I come to realize one thing. I really don't like window trim, especially this style where it's just massive and for some reason they make it the focal point of the whole entire room. So today I'm gonna to attempt to do something about this and I don't really know how it's gonna come out. So I guess we'll figure that one out together. So obviously first things first, this, it's all gonna come out. So with the trim and the casing off the three windows, we've kind of unveiled the mess behind it. So the drywall is kind of chewed up in some areas, but that's okay, I can kind of work with that. However, as we have opened it up to the rough opening of the window frame here, we have this expansion gap the whole way around. And although the expansion gap is necessary, it's not exactly equal. So to overcome that, I've added some shims level and square from each other all the way around, flush with the outside edge of each of the windows. And now that all the windows are level, packed out and square from each other, I could now just simply do a drywall return all the way around and then mud it and then paint it. And then that would look fine, but I kind of want to add some wood tones up here. So with that in mind, I'm going to do a simple white oak casing all the way around the window reveals. And that's going to tie in nicely with the floor. And then I'm going to have the drywall butt up flush to the outside of it ultimately avoiding having to have trim. With that said, the drywall's in pretty rough shape, so we're gonna have to do something about it. So I ended up grabbing a few lengths of this drywall corner trim bead stuff, whatever you want to call it, from my local hardware store. And it's essentially the same as a regular corner, apart from you only really mud one face, which is exactly what we want to do here, is just mud the front face. So I cut all my beading down to the size of my openings and then stuck it down with drywall mud, making sure to lip it over my shims so that way it stays nice and square, plumb and level. So now what I'm going to do is continue the drywall mud process on the face here and then meanwhile while all that is drying I can go ahead and take some measurements of my openings and then head on into the shop to make a start on those white oak casings. You. So for the material of my door casings, I'm gonna be using this white oak veneered MDF. And it's just like regular MDF, except the top and the bottom have a real thin layer of white oak. So ultimately from the face, it just looks like a big piece of white oak, but about half the cost. So next I'm gonna break it down in half on my track saw. <laughs> and then rip it down to four and a half inch wide sections on my table saw. And now that my white oak is cut into strips, I can go ahead and cut my headers and my sills to length on my table saw. So before I go ahead and cut my window jams to size my side pieces of my casings, I want to go ahead and cut out a rabbit on each ends of my sills and my headers at about one eighth of an inch deep and three quarters of an inch wide, which is the thickness of my material. And ultimately that just creates a nice little seat for my side pieces to sit into. And the whole thing kind of just locks together. There's no slipping around during glue up. It looks tidier and it's just a lot cleaner when putting the whole thing together. So to do that, I set up my dado stack in my table saw and then remove the required material to cut out those rabbits. So now I can put my sills and headers aside and start cutting out my window jams. And before I go ahead and cut my side pieces to my measurements, I gotta remember that the style that I'm building these, I have to remove the thickness of my sill and the thickness of my header off of those measurements. Else when I come to install them, they're gonna be too big for the opening. So now that the casings are assembled and drying, some of you may notice you can still see the MDF core, which for obvious reasons is no good. So luckily, wait, wait, wait. So luckily I got a bunch of scraps from a previous project, which I can rip down to do a bit of an edge banding on that. 
So with this stuff, I'm gonna rip it down into one eighth of an inch thick strip at three quarters inch wide, which is again, the thickness of my material on my table saw. And with the white oak strips all cut up, I can now start gluing them to the face of my casings. And then once the glue has dried, I can give it a good sand, break away any of the sharp edges, and then give it a couple of coats of oil. And now that they've had a couple of coats of finish on them, it's time to take them upstairs and get them installed. And that's how it's done. So now it's a very small detail, but it's a replacement of a large detail that I didn't really like. 